Hello everyone and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session I'm going to look at a foreign currency put option under the IFRS 9. I'm going to work the cash flow hedge in detail then go over the fair value hedge very briefly. This topic is covered in international accounting, the CPA exam as well the ACCA exam. As always I would like to remind you if you have not connected with me to connect with me on LinkedIn YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. If you subscribe, please like my videos. It's very important. It helped me substantially. If you like my videos, please share them. Put them in the playlist. If they're benefiting you, it means they might benefit other people. Share the wealth. It's free. Also, I have an Instagram account. I'm trying to grow my Instagram account as well as Facebook, and this is my website. If you are studying for your CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out studypal.co. It's an artificial intelligence study buddy platform that matches you with CPA, CFA, whatever exam you are working for. StudyPal has users in 85 countries and 2,800 cities. And here's the link if you're interested in checking it out. Now, in this, in this session, we're going to talk about options. Specifically, we're going to talk about put options. Now, before we proceed, I just want to let you know, I have two links in the description below. So in the description below, I have two links. And those two links are for a forward contract. Foreign currency forward contract. So it's very important that you understand how forward contract work. And I have a cash flow hedge example cash flow hedge and I have I explain a fair value hedge I'm gonna be using the same example to illustrate how options work so in the prior session I, I went over cash flow hedge as well as fair value hedge when it comes to forward contract now an alternative option for companies an alternative option and that's not that that's not the only alternative option but this is one of the alternative option to forward contract is something called a put option or a call option so this is what we're going to be discussing in this session, but it's very important to understand how does an option work. And specifically, we're going to be covering put option in this example, but I'm going to explain both the put as well as the call option. How does it work in general? So what is the put and what's the call option and how do they differ? How do they differ from the forward contract? Well, under the forward contract, you basically have an obligation to buy or sell that currency. So you don't have an option. Basically, if you remember, we said we're going to sell the currency at dollar 48. Basically, we are in a sense stuck. Let's put it. Let's let's let me let me put stuck in quote. You are stuck. You have the obligation to sell it at 148. Well, the put option is a little bit different. The put option said you have the right. But not but not the obligation it means if you want to sell it you can sell it at dollar 48 but if the price is dollar 55 if the price is dollar 55 guess what you, why would you sell it at dollar 48 you let your option expire and you sell your currency at dollar 55 so that's what an option is it doesn't you're not stuck Okay, this is if you are selling, if you are buying, if you want to buy something, let's assume you want to buy something for, you want to buy a foreign currency at, at a rate of $3, okay, then, and you pay the premium to have that right, then the price of that currency dropped to 250 you can buy it for 250 well, guess what? You, you have the option to buy it at three, you option that if it's at 250, I'm gonna let my option expire and I'll buy it at 250, assuming it's it's worth it. Assuming it's, it's it, it, uh, at 250, it, uh, it covers my premium. And we'll talk about the premium in a moment. The premium is what you have to pay to have that option. So the option is more flexible. So you can, you can, you can go ahead and exercise your option. Or if you don't think it's a good idea to exercise your option, if you think it's a good idea to buy or sell the current currency at the spot rate, you will go ahead and sell it at the spot rate. The forward contract, you can do that. Once you, once you sign for it, you have to deliver at that rate. So we're going to explain this in an example. So let's go back and review our example from the beginning, the one that we used for the forward contract. We have X, Eximo Co. shipped goods to a Spanish customer with a payment to be received on March 1st. Assume that the spot rate for euros is $1.50, but December 31st, 
the euro appreciated the dollar 51. So here's the deal. We sold 1 million worth of euros. The rate is dollar 50 on the date of the sale. So when we record the sale, we record it at the spot rate. That's always the case. So at the spot rate, we have 1.5 million in receivable, 1.5 million in sales. 1231, the euro is dollar 51. Well, guess what? We're going to have more receivable. We increased the receivable 10,000 and we have a gain of 10,000. So we adjust, adjust to the spot rate. We adjust the receivable to the spot rate. Okay. Now, March 1st, the exchange rate is $1.48. Well, when we receive the foreign currency, we have basically the foreign currency went from $1.51 to $1.48. Not good. So we experience a $30,000 loss on the foreign currency because it went down by three pennies times a million. That's a $30,000 loss. So we write down the receivable and we book a loss. Then we receive the cash. We receive the cash. We received 1.1,480,000. Once we exchange it, we receive the euro, we exchange it to dollar, and we reduce our receivable, we remove the receivable. So this is when we have no protection, no forward, and no option. I looked at forward contract before. I worked the fair value at, as well as the uh, fair value, as well as the cash flow hedge. Now we're going to be looking at an option. Now we're going to buy an option to protect our position, to protect what is our position? What is our exposure? We have a million euros. We're pending a million euros. We're waiting to receive a million euros. So let's take a look at this. Assume on December 31st, we bought, the, uh, the company bought an over-the-counter put option from the bank with a strike price of $1.50 when the spot rate is $1.50 and pay a premium of 0 0.00 per euro. Simply put, here's what they did. They went to the bank or no, actually not to the bank over the counter. Just basically they bought it somewhere on the market from somewhere on the market from another from another party. And what they did, they said, well, the strike price is dollar fifty. Therefore, they can they can sell they can sell their euros at dollar fifty. So now they kind of guarantee that price. But to guarantee that price, they had to pay point zero zero nine per contract. This doesn't come cheap. Why? Because somebody is buying, selling you this option. Well, you have to pay $9,000 for it. Okay. But you are guaranteed you'll be able to sell your euros at $1.50. So when you get the euros, when you get the million dollar euro, you can sell them at $1.50. You are guaranteed 1500000 But remember, you had to pay $9,000 to have this option. So copy this number down. 1,491,000. This is your guaranteed amount. At least, or at least let's put it this way. This is the least amount you you would receive from the 1 million euros. That's it. You you locked your price. Okay? You locked your price. Why? Because this option, this put option, they said you can sell the euro at dollar 50. Okay, you can sell the euro at dollar fifty. It means once you receive your euros, you could always sell it at dollar fifty, but you have to pay up front nine thousand dollars. So there's a cost for the for the uh, for the euro. Now keep in mind this this option has no intrinsic value. Why it does have no intrinsic value? Because the spot rate is dollar fifty, and the strike price is dollar fifty. Therefore. You have no you have no gain if you exercise this option today. Therefore, there's no intrinsic value. Well, remember, the option has two pieces, intrinsic value and time value. Yes, there is a time value. The time value is the time from December 1st. And remember, the payment is going to be made March 1st. So from here to here, from here to here, if the price drops, then you'll be good. This put, this put option is good. So what you're doing is you're protecting yourself. So what you're saying is, your fear is the price is going to drop to dollar forty, okay? And if it drops to dollar forty, you have a million euros. You would receive if you're not protected one point four million. But also the price of the euro could go up to dollar sixty. Well, in that case, you're going to let the option expire and exercise your euros at dollar sixty and receive one point six million. Okay? So we don't know what's going to happen, but you know you you are guaranteed at least 1,491. So if it drops to dollar 40 on the on March 1st, you can sell it at dollar 50. If it goes up to dollar 60, you will you would let the, your you would let your option expire, you would throw it in the garbage and you will exercise at the market price. Okay? So you are guaranteed at least as I said, you are guaranteed at least 1,491. 
thousand one million four hundred and ninety one thousand okay <coughs> Right, sorry about that let's go back here okay just trying to clear my screen there we go okay so there is there is only time value in this option and it, it has more value as the as the as the price drops below below dollar 50 okay so if the if the stock price in three months is greater than the strike price of dollar 50 then you will not exercise as I said if it's at dollar 60 you let it expire by purchasing this option, you are guaranteed a minimum cash flow of one million nine hundred, one million four hundred and ninety-one thousand. I already told you this, okay? And remember, there's no limit to the maximum number of U.S. dollar you could receive. If if the price went up to two dollars, then guess what? You would receive a million times two dollar, two million, okay? So you don't have to exercise at dollar fifty. You just have the option to exercise, the option to exercise. So foreign currency options are derivatives, therefore they must be reported on the balance sheet at fair value. Okay, so the fair value of the foreign currency option at the balance sheet is determined by referencing the premium quoted by banks on that date for an option with similar expiration date. Now here they use the black shoal method. We don't have to worry about how they came up with that market value of the option. So the option by itself has a market value. Okay, the option by itself has a market value. That's the hedged, that's the hedged instrument. The hedged is the account receivable. You're hedging your account receivable with an option. Okay, so the change in value for the euro account receivable and the foreign currency are summarized below. So what I suggest you do, if you don't have the PowerPoint slides, you know, take those numbers down because when I when I'm working the uh, journal entries, I cannot keep referencing back and forth to this. Okay, so on December first, the spot rate is dollar fifty. You have one point five million receivable in U.S. dollar. At this at this rate, the premium uh, the the you paid point zero zero nine. Therefore, basically, your option is worth the day nine thousand dollar. It's all. It all has to do with time. So it has a nine thousand dollar time value. On December thirty first, uh, the 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 rate went up to dollar fifty one. Therefore, your receivable went up. Your receivable went up by ten thousand. The up the premium went down. Notice it was point zero zero nine. It went down to point zero zero six. So simply put, you lost point zero zero three. Okay, as time expire. Well, this is basically time expiration of the option, okay? And also, remember, the the uh, why did it go down to, in addition to time expiration, remember the, the euro versus the dollar, now dollar 51. That's against what you want, against your protection. Your protection is going down and the rate went up. It didn't really help you, okay? But by March 1st, the rate went down to dollar 48. Now you are happy. Now your 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 option is worth more. Okay. Now your receivable is worth 1,480,000. Your receivable went down when went from dollar 51 to dollar 48. There's a thirty thousand dollar change, but your premium went up because you are protected. Remember, you can sell it at dollar 50, and the rate is dollar 48. Therefore. You you are protected. You 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 are in good shape. So the premium the premium went up from 0.06 to 0.002, which is you have a fair value. Now the premium has a fair value of twenty thousand. It changed sixteen thousand dollar. The change in the fair value of the premium. Okay. So let's take a look at the journal entries and see how we how we record those transactions. Again, we're get, I'm going to be referencing to this table, but let's look at the journal entries. Assuming this is a cash flow hedge, so we're going to look at a cash flow hedge rather than a fair value hedge. We'll, 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 we'll talk about the fair value hedge toward the end. Okay. So what I suggest you do right from the front, use T accounts to keep track of all the accounts because we're going to have many accounts we're going to be dealing with. So the best way to look at this is to keep track, keep track of them. Okay. Let's take a look at the first entry. The first entry will be debit account receivable credit sales. And this is to sell, I'm sorry, not to sell, to record the sale at the spot rate. That's the first thing we have to do. Then what else do we have to do? We bought the we bought the option. Now we're going to have an asset called foreign currency option. This is an asset. Basically, this is an asset. It's basically a, an investment, and we credit cash. And this is to record the purchase of the foreign currency option as an asset at its fair value of nine thousand. Why nine thousand? Because they told us the fair value is nine thousand because the strike price and the spot price were the same. Dollar fifty, dollar fifty. The spot, as well as the strike. And you paid nine thousand. It's worth nine thousand. Okay, that's basically it. Okay, now let's take a look at 
at December 31st. Remember what happened December 31st? Now we're dealing with a rate of $1.51. $1.51. Your account receivable will go up and you have a foreign currency gain. Why do you have a foreign currency gain? Because you have a receivable and the and your and the exchange rate for your receivable went up. So this is to adjust your account receivable at a spot rate of $1.51. Now remember, if you have a if you have a gain of dollar ten thousand dollar, you're gonna have to record a corresponding loss. So there is the hedged instrument, the hedged instrument, the receivable. I'm sorry, the hedged item, the receivable. This is the item, and the instrument. They work the same way. The they work exact the opposite way, not the same way. So if you had a gain on the hedged item, you're gonna have a loss on the on the exact the exact loss on the uh, on the instrument. So. You're gonna debit loss on foreign currency option. Notice you had a gain of 10,000. You have to record a corresponding loss. And we're go you're gonna credit accumulated other comprehensive income 10,000. So notice those two on the income statement, the net effect zero, they cancel each other out. And this is the purpose of the hedge, is to whatever gain you have on the option, you would lose it on the hedged item. Whatever you gain you have on the hedged item, you would lose it in the option, okay? Then you will have this, you will credit accumulated other comprehensive income. And I suggest you keep track of this account, A, um, A O C I. Now you have in the air $10,000. Okay, we're not done yet. We have to remember, we have to reduce the option from 9,000 to 6,000. Why do we have to reduce it from 9,000 to 6,000? Because the, pr the value of the option was 0 0.009. By December 31st was 0 0.006. It went down 0 0.003. Therefore, we're, we're gonna record this debit, other comprehensive income, and credit foreign currency option. Now we're gonna be reducing the foreign currency option by 3,000. It's that the asset, okay? We're going to be reducing it by 3000 and this is to reflect also the change in the option. The option was worth only 6000 therefore we reduce we reduce it by 3000 It was 9 now it's down to 6 Okay. Now we have to expense. We have to expense time value. So we're going to, we're going to debit option expense 3000 This is for the time value of the option. This is for the change in the time value of the option. Okay, so we're going to assume that, that, that that's 3 pennies because time has passed. Okay, now notice here that you debited OCI, let me highlight it in a different color. You debited OCI, you credited OCI. Basically what you're left with is you expensed 3,000 of the stock option and you credited foreign currency option of 3,000. So this is basically what it boils what it boils down to. So you reduced an asset and you, you increased an expense. Basically that $9,000 that we paid, 3,000 of it is expense. It's expired because time went by time went by. So let's take a look at year one effect. Year one, we recorded a sale of 1.5 million. We recorded foreign exchange gain on the receivable. We record the foreign exchange loss on the currency option. Therefore, the effect is zero. The only thing that goes in addition to the 1.5 million is the expensing, reducing the option by 3,000 because time has passed time value on the balance sheet here's here's the effect we reduced cash by nine thousand this is obviously just showing you the change account receivable is up by one million five hundred and ten you have a foreign currency option it was nine thousand when you started with then you reduced it by three now it has a six thousand dollar value retained earning is one million four hundred ninety seven which is net income and you have an aoci of ten thousand dollar ten thousand dollar so those are the effect. Now we're going to look at the transaction, what happened on uh, March 1st. On March 1st, remember in this example, we are assuming that it's $1.48. Now, before we proceed, I'm going to stop right here and tell you something. After I'm done with this $1.48, I'm going to use another, another price, another spot rate for March 1st. So on March 1st, year two, the option has increased in value by 14,000, time value decreased by 6,000, and intrinsic value increase. So the intrinsic value increased by 1,000, although the time value is gone because by March 1st, the time value is gone, but the intrinsic value increased. Why? Because the spot rate was $1.48. Now, once I'm done with this spot rate $1.48, I'm going to change the spot rate to something above the strike price. And once I do so, I will start the entries like here, March 1st. So December 31st entry will not, will not be any different. Okay. But now we're going to assume that the strike, the spot rate 
on March 1st is dollar 48. It means good for us. In what sense it's good? It's not really good, good, but it's good in a sense that we are protected. It's dollar 48, but we can sell our currency at dollar 50. So compared to other people, we did good because we protected ourselves. So the first thing we have to do is adjust our receivable. So we reduce our receivable and we record the loss. Okay, we, we reduce our receivable, then we record the loss. Then, remember, when we have uh, when we have a loss on the receivable, we have a gain on the corresponding uh, on the corresponding uh, hedging instrument. Therefore, if we have a loss here, we're going to have a gain here, exact opposite. Therefore, we debit accumulated other comprehensive income, we credit gain on foreign currency option. This is to record the gain on the foreign currency option to offset the foreign exchange gain on the account receivable with the corresponding debit to AOCI, accumulated other comprehensive income. Remember, whatever happened to the receivable, if it, if it, if it went up, the option will go down. If receivable went down, the option will go up. That's the purpose of the whole hedging, the purpose of the whole hedging position. That's the purpose of it. Now, what else do we have to do? Foreign currency option, we're gonna increase foreign currency option. We're gonna increase the asset by 14,000. Why do we increase the asset by 14,000? It was six. Now we add 14, it's equal to 20,000. Why did it go up? Because the the foreign currency went down. As the foreign currency went down, our option is worth more because we are protected at dollar fifty and it's dollar forty-eight. Okay? So now the foreign currency option is twenty thousand. Therefore we debit foreign currency option, we credit other accumulated other other accumulated other comprehensive income. We're not done yet. We have m many more entries to go through. Then we're going to expense the option that's that's left. We're going to expense the option that's left. We're going to debit up. We're going to debit option expense. Okay. Why do we debit the op option expense? Because that's the time value. Remember, we had a six thousand dollar time value. We have to expense the time value of it. Because then. We're going to debit foreign currency because we received the foreign currency and we credit the receivable. We received the foreign currency 1,480,000 because we received 1 million euros, 1 million at a rate of dollar 48, at a rate of dollar 48. Then we're going to convert everything. We're going to debit cash 1.5 million because we can, we can convert this 1 million euros at 1.5, at 1.5. Therefore, we're going to get 1.5 million. We're going to credit the foreign currency receive we're going to credit the foreign currency we're going to give up 1.4 million and credit foreign currency option of 20,000 basically on this transaction specifically we made $20,000 but that's not the net our net gain so let's see what happened overall of the, for the whole for the whole transaction hopefully you, you are keeping track of things here's what happened in year two you had a foreign foreign exchange loss, a foreign exchange gain that cancel each other out. Then you expense the remaining option of six thousand, the time value of money. Therefore, the impact on net income is negative six, negative six thousand. That's the that's the that's the effect on year year one. So negative six thousand. No, this negative six thousand year one year two. Let's go back to year one and show you how much was year one was. And the net effect on year one was. The losses were three thousand. So three plus six equal to nine. Okay, and remember, remember what I told you: the maximum you would receive is one million nine hundred and ninety-one thousand. So let's see. So over two accounting period, we reported a sale of one point five million and a cumulative option expense of nine thousand. We expense three thousand year one. We expensed six thousand in year two. That's the six thousand, and the year one was three thousand. The net effect on the balance sheet is an increase of 1,491,000 with a corresponding retained earning of 1,491,000. You remember what I told you from the get-go? The minimum we would receive is this much. And we did receive the minimum. We could receive more. We're going to see it's possible we could receive more. But the point is we will not receive less than 1,491,000. Okay, the net benefit from acquiring this option is 11,000. Why the net benefit is 11,000? If we were not protected, we would have received 1,480. If we had no protection, because we had protection, we received 1,491. Therefore, the net benefit is 11,000. We received 11,000 more than if we did not have any protection, which is good. So the gain is reflected in net income. 
okay as the net change on foreign currency less cumulative option expense so we have 20,000 on the currency we did good on the currency but we had to pay 9,000 so we did good on the selecting our, our investment so we had again on the foreign currency option but the cost of the foreign currency option was nine so 20 minus 9 equal to 11. So we made 11,000. We are better off $11,000 over two accounting period by having this option. So let's assume now, remember I told you I'm going to change the spot rate. Let's assume the spot rate on March 1st was dollar point point five zero five. What does that mean? It means it's more than 0.5. It's 0 0.05. So why would I convert at 1.5? So would I convert at 1.5 or would I convert at 1.05? Obviously, I'm going to let my option expire and I'm going to convert at this, at this, at this, at this rate. And as a result, if you can think about it, I'm, I'm making 0 0.005 more times a million. I'm going to be making an additional $5,000. Okay, why? Because I'm going to let the option expire. Let's, let's take a look at it. So December 31st entries will be the same. Now we're going to be changing the example. Now, we're going to have to adjust the receivable. The receivable is adjusted. It was 1.51 December 31st. Now it's 1.505. So the receivable went down by 5,000. We're going to reduce the receivable. Don't worry, we're going, to, we're going to book a corresponding gain. So notice we have a loss on the receivable, okay, because the it went down from 1.51 to 1.50. You're comparing it to December 31st. Then you're going to get rid of the option. So the time value of the option, you're going to credit foreign currency option, debit a loss for 6,000. This is to record the uh, to record the time value, the time value of the option expired. That's it's gone, goes down to zero. Now we're going to debit accumulated other comprehensive income and credit gain on for gain on foreign currency option. So notice you have a loss here, you have a gain here. Okay, now then you're going to go ahead and reverse this entry and transfer the gain to net income at the end of the period. But the point is for every loss you have a gain. Okay, so to, to offset the loss, this entry should be here, but that's okay. Then we're going to receive foreign currency. We're going to be receiving 1,505,000. Why? Because we're going to we're going to convert the currency at 1.505. Then we're going to take the currency and convert it to cash at 1 million. 505,000 and we're going to remove the foreign currency give them the foreign currency and they will give us US dollar so notice what happened here is we received an additional $5,000 so we received 1 million 491 plus an additional $5,000 and you will see this in a moment so now at the end of the period we we debit this account and we remove we move the five thousand to net income so because the transaction has settled so here's what happened net income related to this hedge transaction is one million nine hundred one million four hundred ninety six the sale is one point five million we paid nine thousand for the option then we made a five thousand dollar because we let the option expired and we exercise at a higher than dollar fifty we because we were guaranteed one million four hundred ninety one but if the price is higher than dollar fifty, we're gonna get more. This is how the put option work. So let's assume this option was designated as a fair value hedge. What will be the differences? The gain and the loss would be directly going to net income. Remember, we don't go through the OCI. No separate recognition for the change in the time value of the option. So that three thousand and six thousand that we removed, we don't account for that. The net gain recognized in year one and year two would be different from the amount recognized under the cash flow, but over a two-year period, it will be the same. So the way we we compute the gain, the the income from year one to year two, it might be different between the fair value. Uh, fair value hedge and the cash flow hedge, but over a two year period, they will be the same. Okay, so the accounting method has no impact on cash flow or net income recognized overall. So at the end of the day, the cash flow and the net income is the same, just how much you recorded in year one versus year two under the cash flow hedge versus the versus the fair value hedge. If you have any questions, any comments about this recording, please um, email me. In the next recording, I will maybe maybe work a uh, purchase commitment, explain purchase commitment, foreign currency when we have a purchase commitment. And uh, if you have any questions, email me. If you're studying for your CPA or ACCA, study hard. These, these topics are covered. And if you happen to visit my website, please consider supporting the channel by donating. Good luck and see you on the other side of success.